Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our webinar on the economics calendar. Now, as you know, tonight's class is brought to us by ETX, and ETX is a regulated provider, so I'm required to read you a risk warning, so let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets can result in the loss of the amount invested. Do not trade with funds that you cannot afford to lose and seek advice if you do not understand the risks. All information that is provided in this webinar is for educational purposes only. ETS Capital and the presenter are not financial or investment advisors, and we do not recommend any securities or instruments of any kind. Any securities or instruments that are mentioned tonight are for educational purposes only. And for those of you who are joining us through an internet promotion don't know much about us, we are a fast-growing financial services company based in London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority, and we are a member firm of the London Stock Exchange under our parent company, Monocore Limited. Now, when you trade with ETX, you can choose from one of our platforms like we showed you in the video. Now, tonight, we're here to discuss the economics calendar. Now, the economics calendar is a fundamental analysis tool for traders like you and me to position ourselves to take advantage of future price movements. The economics calendar, which is published daily, is the main trading tool for traders that use fundamental analysis as signals for entering and exiting trades. Economic and political news can change the direction of a currency pair in seconds. And fundamentals that are true in one instant can be rendered absolutely meaningless by fresh fundamentals a few seconds later. The economics calendar enables traders to track, to keep track of economic events and major political events, such as elections, that impact price movement. Now, there are a couple things we have to understand first off the bat. The economics counter doesn't cover things like Donald Trump's announcement that should have just happened a few minutes ago. Doesn't have doesn't cover news, so to speak. Things like the G10 or the G20 summits are handled, are listed on the economics counter. Major elections like you know the U.S. election or the French election, because they are planned events that happen well, you know, and we know when that event is taking place way in advance. Just like central bank meetings and interest rate decisions, we know when they're gonna happen, but we have no idea what Mario Draghi is gonna say necessarily, but we know when they're gonna happen. The other thing we have to keep in mind is the most of the economic events have nothing to do or were not introduced for Forex or commodities traders. These are economic data, statistical reports that are released by governments as part of their statistical information. They are part of their economy. And even though a report is being issued, it's not being issued for the Forex market. Okay. A jobs report, when we look at what's called the headline data, whether jobs are good or bad, could have, say one thing about the overall economy where it could say, Jobs between 45 and 65 year olds saw a peak in hiring where it was where it was uh, the job market for college graduates college graduates that was down, or healthcare and nursing was hiring like crazy where IT and development wasn't. Well, if you're a um, headhunter or you've got a company and you're hiring people or you're you know you're looking at you know the demand for certain types of people. These, these reports have a big effect on you. Okay, where the subset or the, the headline event could have been just completely average. So the government doesn't do this or compile this data just for Forex traders or commodities traders or stock traders. It, it affects all the economics around, you know, around the world and it affects every sector that there is. Now, that being said, there are major events that have huge implications on the 
publicly traded markets, whether it's Forex, whether it's cryptos, whether it's stocks, whether it's indices, whether it's oil, whether it's gas, you know, they will have those overall events. Now, for the Forex market or the investing market, so to speak, we're less concerned with all of the events or the, all the matter of all these reports. If you ever go look at one of these reports, they are a huge statistical analysis with section after section after section after section. Like the NFP report for the US, the jobs report, is hundreds of pages long. It has statistics that cover everything. But the only thing we're concerned with is what we call the headline event. The unemployment number, how many jobs were created, and the wages and the growth. We're not as concerned with there was more growth, more more jobs created in the, the Midwest and less jobs created in, in the East Coast. Doesn't affect the value of the currency market. Doesn't affect really the stock market. Now, the other thing we have to remember is there are hundreds and hundreds of these reports that are released. And let's go over and look at a live economics calendar. Because the biggest advantage of all of this is, I'm just going to wait for it to pop up on screen, is that these events are one of the few things in the investing markets that are known quantities. In other words, we know exactly when the release will happen. We know exactly what the market expectation is. We know exactly what that report was at the last time it was released. Now, we're looking at the calendar available FX Street for no other reason except I like using it for classes. There are a million calendars out there. Okay. And all of them come from basically the same data feeds. There is no really customized calendar. All this data is public data. All the data is fed out to the, the websites or the calendar websites by the same feeds. So what you have is the creative designer and the tech developer who try to customize this to make it look like it's integrated into their site, to make it look prettier, to make it look unique. But the report that's released is being reported, released at the same time around the globe. And whether I'm looking at a calendar from FX Street, whether I'm looking at a calendar from Vesta.com, I'm looking at a calendar on the broker site, it's all the same release, the same data. Now, the biggest, the biggest differences are how they are laid out, how fast they get the feeds. And that makes a big difference because some people are, or some calendars, are just using an API to take, or a, you know, I don't know the technology, but taking the this this calendar that you're looking at from FX Street and legally, but using it on their site, so they get it a little bit slower because you have to wait for the calendars to update. But besides that, they're relatively the same. And we're going to run through all the parts of the calendar before we go on. But right now, I've pulled up on this calendar all the economic events that have been tied to the Forex or investing, not the Forex, but the investing markets. And as you can see, scrolling down here, these events go on forever. There's a lot of events. And I've only got here the, a few countries laid out. Okay. Now, you got to remember, all this economic data, Every country in the world releases it just about. You know, the U.S. releases their jobs report. England releases their jobs report. New Zealand releases their jobs report. But so does Korea. So does Japan. So does Saudi Arabia. So does Iraq. So does, you know, um, France. So does Spain. So does Italy. So if you just think about all these countries releasing data every day, it's a lot of stuff blowing out. But again, there's only so much that affects the finance markets. And what surprises most people is all this data has a standard rating system. 
In other words, all the data in the finance market is broken into three tiers, level one, level two, and level three. And regardless of which site you use the data from, they're all rated the same because that rating is actually pushed out there by the data feed. Now, in this case, FX Street uses colors, so we can see oranges, yellows, and reds. Investing.com uses bullheads. Another place uses explanation marks. Another place uses numbers because the data is being fed out by a, you know, a, a feed and they can reconfigure that feed and to say, tell if it's, it's a level one, make it red. If it's a level two, make it orange. If it's a level three, make it green. But that's only computer stuff. It's not data stuff. Now, the three levels are important because in this case, it's the red level, but it's what we call top tier data. That data is vitally important to the economy, but also vitally important to the investing markets because that data being released is important enough that it can have the volatility or the impact to actually move the value of currencies or oil or, or commodities or whatever else. Okay. So it's significantly important, especially to us as traders. After that, we have what's called level two data. Level two data a lot of times is a sub report of a bigger report that's important or it's a report that's of note but it usually unless it's oh, you know something horrible horrible won't have a big effect on the overall markets our trading market because we're concerned only at this moment about what's affecting our trading not what's affecting the economy of the country we're not looking at long term investments that we're going to be you know we're all here to evaluate CFD trading, Forex trading, short-term commodity trading. Now, if we were looking at some type of an overall situation in the housing market, and a lot of the data was level two, but we could see it would have a longer-term effect on maybe Home Depot stock or a, a contractor stock or builders, you know, shares. We might, that might be important to us if we were looking at buying shares of a particular builder. But if it's level two, it's not so significantly important. But level three, the main housing data is ultimately important and will have an almost direct effect on the markets. But that's only if it is better much better or much worse than what we were expecting. Now, we'll get down to what we're expecting. Now, I mentioned to you earlier that news doesn't really flow on the calendars. I think what we're seeing here is Donald Trump's speech today, uh, which is happening right now on our, the Iranian deal. Well, the fact is he didn't even announce it until that he was going to make this address until yesterday. So in this case, FX Street pushed this on to the calendar right away. But things like this aren't usually on a calendar because this is more about news and headlines, even though it affects the economy. We don't usually see this on calendars. Now, let's talk about the parts of this calendar or what we need to do. The first thing we always want to do is make sure we, and almost every calendar, because I can't say 100% because I'm not sure and I don't see one, will give you a way to set your local time zone. This should be the first thing you do when going to a new economics calendar because you want to make sure that you're not miscalculating when that report will come out in your local time zone and trade incorrectly or make a mistake because you've got the times mixed up. And believe me, back in the day, before the calendars were, were easily set, uh, believe me, I would forget that GMT time was only, you know, yeah, it was BST time, not GMT time because, you know, things hadn't changed. And before we had the setting ability, I just forget and I make mistakes by an hour. And this could be crucial to your trading. Now, also, all of them will give you a place to set filters. Now, today, also, most of them will also give you notifications where you can set up your own notification. But these filters will allow you to filter the data 
on your calendar. Before we go down, okay, the first and easiest part of data is as a Forex commodities CFD trader, most of the country's data will have no effect on you because you can't, it's not going to affect the global assets and you're not trading assets from that country. So like, sure, we don't need Brazil, Colombia, Argentina. We don't need Russia. Norway is not going to help us. A lot of the, the European countries that are small, their data being good or bad isn't going to affect the value of the euro. So we don't need Australia. We, uh, Austria. We don't need Chile. We don't need Denmark. We definitely need Germany. We don't really need Italy because it's a small economy and it doesn't, no matter how good or bad their data is, will not have a tradable, I mean, remember, tradable effect on the euro. So what do we need to have? We need to have, we don't even have Spain. We need to have the UK, Australia, because Australia's got its own money. Canada, if you follow the Canadian What's it called up there? Um, the name of a bird. Well, I can't ever remember what the Canadian dollar is called. But the Canadian dollar, we don't need, we don't need French economy. Okay, of course, we want the United States, Germany, New Zealand, because they have their own economy. Switzerland, uh, they have their own currency. Switzerland, if you're trading the Swissy. China, because China, dat, unless, you know, Chinese data will have an overall effect on the overall markets has a big effect on the commodities market. And then we want all the European, the a monetary union, because most data is released in the European Union simultaneously. So it's collected by the governments and then like PMI, it will be released for all the countries and that's um, purchasing managers index. And then the, Euro, the total Eurozone data will be released. What we're more concerned with is German data because Germany is the, the workhorse of the Eurozone. And then, of course, the overall number for the Eurozone because that's going to take into effect all the other countries. Then we want to keep Japan. So we've sectioned off the, country, the countries. And you can turn these off and on as much as you want. Now, next, almost all of them will offer us categories. I just simply leave all categories on. You can turn off things like holidays if you're not interested in them. Some offer bonds, some will offer some odd things, but I just leave them all on. But then we come and all of them give you basically the same choices. They may call them something different, but they offer the same choices. Now here, FX Street calls it volatility. Forex Factory calls it tiers and investing.com calls it importance levels or impact levels. They're still in three tier data. First tier, second tier, third tier. This this here isn't a tier. This is this first one is for data that doesn't have any effect on the markets. It could be a speech, you know, um, not a speech about the economy. Uh, it could be a lot of other things that don't have an effect on the overall markets. Okay. Now, when we looked at the calendar that I brought up here for a minute ago. We saw it, endless amounts of data, more data than you could work on and, and, and keep track of. So we don't need level one data. It doesn't really have any effect on the tradable assets. So we can just move over our marker and cover level two and level one and level two data, which is important to us. Okay, then if we just click on the filter, Well, notice it's come down to a small, much smaller piece of information or much smaller amounts of data that we can work with. Now, before we learn how to read this, let's talk about some things that you should know about this. The nicest thing about the calendar is all this data is programmed in advance. It means you can start doing analysis a week ahead of time and prepare for what you might want to trade when these events take place. Or if you're in the markets, regardless of why you're in the markets, how you got in the markets, no matter what you're trading, you should always be looking at the economics calendar to see what data might be coming out that could affect the assets you already have in the markets. 
say we have nothing you know you you made a, a trade on the euro us dollar early this morning and everything was going as it should be you i i don't know how you made your decision it's not important to me how you made your decision but you've entered a trade in the euro us dollar you set your stop loss you take profit points you've done everything and but you didn't look at the calendar you didn't realize that the trade balance numbers were coming out or industrial production now any one of those events that are level two or level three could cause a little bit of volatility or a lot of volatility to the asset you're trading. Maybe it'll send the asset higher in the direction or lower in direction, whichever you had chosen. Or maybe it'll just cause a few minutes of knee-jerk reaction, temporary volatility in the market. Well, because you didn't look at the calendar, you had to stop and say, ah, you know what? I should move my stop loss a little bit farther out because I just want to be able to wade through that volatility if that event is a slight miss or the markets get, you know, you do something for a couple seconds. And you didn't look at the event. Or the euro had moved all the way in your favor. You're very happy with it, but you set your, your profit point too high. Not for any other reason. You were going to let it run. But you didn't take into account this event because you didn't look at the calendar. You were way in profit, and this event came out. It was negative and sent your trade in the opposite direction. It got stopped out. So you ended up sitting too long on a profitable trade only because you didn't look at the economics calendar. So besides trading from the economics calendar, it's a tool that will help you or stop you from making mistakes. Now, let's come over and let's talk about how to read it. The first column and almost every wet and I'm going to say almost universally in every calendar will be the time of the event. Then you'll see the country and the currency that's affected or that is expected to be affected by that event. Okay. Now, for instance, trade balance out of China this morning, or yes, this morning, could have not only had an effect on the Chinese yen, it could have had a big effect on oil prices could have had a big effect on Australian, the Australian Stock Exchange, could have had a big effect on the Aussie dollar, could have had a big effect on the New Zealand dollar. Why? Those are two economies that are intricately related to their trade with China. Okay, And trade balances imports and exports. If we show it's out of whack or there's higher exports going up but less imports, those countries need to, or the, the, the countries don't need to worry, but the, the, you'll see a reaction in those countries. So you have to understand what the asset listed is the currency for the country releasing the report. Not necessarily all of the assets that might be affected. And one of the key components of each event is understanding what assets it might affect. It might not have a big effect on the currency, but might have a big effect on the stock exchange or a particular grouping of stocks. Or like I said, the trade balance, we look at imports and exports, and then they have a huge section on, on energy and oil imports and exports. That has a big effect on oil prices. So we need to understand what this report is. Now, the thing is, the calendars are very helpful tools because if you just click on, and most of the places today are just click on, if you open up, click on the line of the event, it's going to open up and give you a whole bunch of data. Okay, It's going to explain the event. It's going to explain what, it'll help give you other econ other types of assets that might be involved. FX Street gives you a whole set of reports. Okay, and each website gives you different reports. It's going to tell you what the range of reports, the volatility ratio, what assets might be affected, what forex assets, how it might have an effect on them, and a deviation report. It's going to have a whole bunch of information. But also, if you click on the link on trade balance for, for China, it's going to tell you all about the history of this report. It's going to take you to news on this report. It's going to explain this report in detail. Okay. And that will help you understand 
that report. Also, all of them, all the websites will give you a read the official report. Believe me, you should click on this button one time, but only on an English speaking report, because otherwise this report's gonna be in the language of its country. And you'll have to get, you know, most of them have translated in several languages, but you're gonna find out these reports are miles long. You should look at them one time, but after you looked at it the first time, you'll never look at it again. The other thing you have to remember is that these reports are released over and over and over again. Chinese trade balance is released about, I, I don't know what the actual the, the Chinese number, the Chinese releases are very, very strange because China releases things in packs. Okay. But we know when we know when it's scheduled. They're usually every month. Okay, where things like from Europe or the US, I can tell you the jobs report in the US is released on the first Friday of every month. I can tell you that unemployment data is released every Thursday. We can tell you the crude oil inventory is released every Wednesday. Okay, so China's a little bit different, but it's released once a month, but we'll know, they'll notify the public sometime well in advance of the event, but when they'll be releasing next month's event. Now, We know the events. So once you've gone through an entire cycle, you'll get to know these events pretty well because they're released over and over and over again. You know, you're not going to master them all the first time. You'll have to learn to use this calendar because you have to learn the names of the events. Because in the UK, the jobs report is called the claimant count. In the US is called the non-farms payroll report. In Australia, it's just called the jobs report. They're all the same report. They all release the same figures, but they also call these figures something slightly different. No. But that's understandable. But after a while, you know what they all are. You know CPI is inflation. You know PPI is producer's price index. You know PMI is purchasing manager's index. You know, they'll all come to you, no problem. Now, let's go over on how we want to read this calendar. I'm going to take you, and we're going to focus right now on Wednesday. The reason being is things change after the data reports have come out. So let's look at tomorrow because nothing has happened yet for tomorrow. So this is Wednesday's data releases. So first we know that let's take Japanese leading economic indicators. We know that's being released at 0500 GMT time. We know it's being released in Japan. It's going to affect the Japanese yen and other predominant indicators. We know it's a second level report. Okay. That's not too difficult. Now we have, we're gonna move all the way over here to the right. In the right hand column, we have something that's called, let me show you, let me just scroll you up here. We have something that's called previous. Now that's pretty obvious. Okay, previous is, what the number was of this report the last time it was released. So Japanese leading indicator index was at 106 last month. Follow me? Now, it's important to keep in mind, if we look up here on today's reports, and I'm not gonna scroll the counter up, But in this case, when we see a little dot next to it, this little information line, or some of them will turn it red and green, it means that the previous report was updated. Means that because these reports are government reports or from private reporting agencies like Thomson Reuters, but they're calculated and they're always being recalculated that for some reason the previous report had to be adjusted. And this is common in the market. It's not some kind of freak in nature. So we can see that this report where my arrow is right now was revised. And the revision is released when the new report is released. And it was revised from 2.6% down to 2.2%. So that was a negative revision. That was something that was, even though it was last month, 
it's still going to have a slightly negative effect on the asset being looked at. Okay, and it has to be factored into what this report is being released at today. And we'll talk about that in a second. But you have to be aware of these revisions. So anytime you see in the previous column, either an I or a green or a red, because like FX investing.com uses greens and reds. When you see a flash green or red, it means it was revised up or down. And then if you hover over, it'll tell you what the difference was. Here they just give you the information line and show you that it was revised. But either way, if you see something in the previous that's got something unusual to it, not just a whole you know a number, it means that there was a revision. From here we go to the all important column. And that's called the consensus. Sometimes it's called the forecast. Sometimes it's called the outlook. And this is also one of the few places that you might see deviations from one calendar to another. Because government's reports or even statistical reports from Thomson Reuters or Platt, they don't give consensus or forecasts. That's done by analysts. Now, a lot of times you'll be reading Bloomberg and it'll say, Bloomberg's, uh, Bloomberg's survey of 36 analysts predict this report will come in at 3.0. Or you're reading Wall Street Journal and the Wall Street Journal says, our survey of 95 analysts predicted the jobs will, you know, it'll show 192,000 jobs. These are only surveys, forecasts, like YouGov in the UK. They use a whole, you know, a little bit of statistics to come up with a prediction. Now, the whole fact is these consensus are usually pretty accurate. And therefore, the markets rely on them. Now, they don't replace the actual. The actual is released when that government or the official releasing agent releases that data, and that's a firm number. But the consensus number is what is critically important to your trading. And the reason being is the markets and the assets adjust, or the traders adjust, to what they expect in the markets. When the report comes out that is fairly close to its consensus or its expectation or its outlook, there's very little response by the market. So for instance, we look at the Eurozone trade balance here. It was forecast at 19.8 billion and it came in at 22.8 billion. It was a, the reason you see it in green is it was a very positive report. It came in much better than expected. Now, we should have seen, or we could have seen, and we don't know how much the response will be, but that should have given a little bit of a bump to the euro because also it was backed up by a separate report having nothing to do with it on industrial production, which also came in better than expected. But in order to predict how the markets will react, we have to understand how much, what the expectation was and how much this report normally comes in at to have any idea of how big of a gap that we could set between what we call market neutral, market positive and market negative. So once again, we would Go to the line about the data. So since we started out with Japanese leading indexes, a leading economic index, okay, I'm going to click on it, open it up. Okay, I'm going to look at the reports right here below, and I'm going to look at, first of all, I'm going to look at that report, and I can see that the actual back in 2017, but I, I want to get some kind of a range in my head of what this number usually is. How big is it? I mean, when you look at the U.S. existing home sales and it, you know, it comes in the millions of homes. 
And so if it misses by 10,000 homes, it doesn't have much of an effect. But if we were talking about Canadian home sales and it missed by 10,000 homes, that's a horrible, horrible report. So we can see that this Japanese economic leading indicators, number one, releases over the 100 range. And we can also see that since 2016, it's been steadily improving. That helps gives us something about that number. So 106 was what we were expecting. 106 is also part of a steady increase. That means the economy is doing better. We're not having a big dip. We're not having a big economic crisis. And so we've learned a little bit of what this number report is. So 106, okay, and now we're expecting 105.2. Okay. Now, that's not that far off from 106, but how do we predict how the markets will react if the report comes in at 106? at 106.2, what number or what range will not have a tradable effect on the asset? So in other words, we would have to figure out, say 106.2 to 105.0, we might say isn't a tradable effect. It's not a big enough effect that it's gonna make that asset volatile enough or give us some type of a true movement that we could trade. Because again, we're more concerned with how it's going to affect the assets we can trade. And in order to do that, this is where it becomes very personal. And this is where you become a pro. How much time and effort you want to put into building these ranges of market neutral, market positive, and market negative. Now, fortunately, the calendars today give you a lot of this information. So we can see right now in the Euro USD, the volatility ratio that we're expecting for each time this report came out. We, if we're considering trading the Japanese yen on this re release, we can see how much the markets responded to each one of these releases. We can see some deviations. We can see true range. We can read articles. We can see, we get lots of information. And because we already knew a week ago that this is what was set up, the report was coming out, 105.2 was the expectation, 106 was the previous, we could have had the time to do the studies. It's very rare in the financial markets that you actually have time to do studies. You're not calculating now what the asset should be worth. What you're calculating now is what effect this report will have on the value of the asset when that report is released. Now, there are also some reports that the markets will drive down prices or drive up prices before the release. Like, you know, we have no idea. We have some kind of idea today what Donald Trump was going to say. But oil prices have been soaring since, you know, for the last week. When we have a central bank meeting, okay, we don't know exactly what they're inside, but the markets are taking sides on either side. So a lot of times the markets have driven down price or up price because they're expecting a big miss or a big you know, positive. And so there's no effect in the value of the commodity. So you have to be aware of what, whether it's gonna be market neutral, market positive, market negative. And you also have to be aware of where the markets have pushed that asset to. Because a lot of times you get volatility only because the asset came in, came within range, came in, at the Japanese leading came in at 105.2, but the market's been betting that it was gonna be a lot worse because some other reports out there. So we have to take that in the effect. So now I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint and I'm telling you a quick story that's gonna help you kind of get a grasp on this. I just wanna get up to my little picture there. And I call it the story of your kids and their report cards. Because this explains the economics calendar in a very easy manner that you can kind of start to, to make some sense out of this, okay? Or put it into something that, that makes sense for you. You sit down to Sunday dinner with your kids, your family, and you have two kids. You have a daughter and a son. Your son is very, you know, he's a very reliable kid. He's a good kid. You know, you're proud of him. He plays on the soccer team. 
you know, and overall, he doesn't lie to you. He doesn't get in trouble. He doesn't do drugs. You know, he's a teenager in high school, but you know, you've got a good rapport with him. So you sit down at Sunday dinner and say, well, kiddo, report cards are due on Wednesday. He says, yeah, I know. And he said, to him, well, how did you do? Well, first of all, Report cards due on Wednesday are what? The date of the economics event. Okay. Now, you know he comes home from school at 3 o'clock, so you know now that economics event is going to happen at 3 o'clock on Wednesday. You say to the kid, how, did you, how are you going to do? Well, he says, well, you know, Mom and Dad, last semester I brought you home four Cs and four C pluses. Now, what is that? That's the previous. Now, the thing about the economics calendar is just like the re your report card. There is no whitewashing the data. There's no analysis to the data. There's nobody's uh, other personal opinion, no, no technical stuff. It's just numeric values. You didn't go back when the kid brought you home four C's and four C pluses and talk to all of his teachers, find out how many kids were in school. Maybe they changed their overall curve. Maybe they changed the program. No. You know that a C or a C plus, what they're valued at, and you didn't do any research. Okay, this is just what he brought you home. Same thing with the economics count. This is just pure data. It is not based on if the economy was doing well, we would expect a 4.3, but we got a 4.2. That's your analysis. It's not the report's analysis. So he says to you, well, mom and dad, I think I'm going to do a little bit better. I think I might bring you home mostly Bs. Okay. Now, because you depend and rely on your kid and you trust your kid, you say to him, oh, well, great, kiddo. That's better than you did last time. But you give him the parental lecture, you know, like you need to study a little bit more, a little bit less Facebook. You want to get into college and get some scholarships. But... You're smiling on the inside because it's better than you expected him to tell you. But it's not in, it's not in stone. It's only his forecast. But you're reacting to his forecast because you rely on him. Okay, you trust him. Now, on Wednesday at 3 o'clock, he comes running in the front door, hands you the envelope with his report card, goes right out the back door to play soccer with his buddies. You open up the envelope, and it's all B's and one A. You're ecstatic. Why? Not only is it better than the last time, which is relevant, but not important, because you already knew that he was expecting to do better than last time. But it was much better than what he had told you, or much better than your expectation. So... You open up the back door, you holler out to say, hey, kiddo, after, you know, we're going to run over to McDonald's for dinner now and take you. You can get whatever you want. Then we're going to take you to the sporting goods store. You can get that football you liked because you did so well in school. So you have a very positive reaction because it was much better than you expected. If he would have brought you home all the B's or a B, all the B's in one C, you might not have had the same reaction because that's what you were expecting. But now it's all B's and an A. So at what point would you have decided to take him to McDonald's in a sporting goods store? All B's? Well, maybe not because you it wasn't what you were it, you were already expecting. If it was all B's and one C, would you have been disappointed? Not so much. It was still better than what it had been. So this is how you have to judge the assets. Now what happens is, all of a sudden, the soccer ball comes through the picture window in the living room, smashes the glass. Glass is all over the place. Well, guess what? You holler out the back door to, to get this button here and clean up the glass. You know, you run over and call the handyman. You tell him the hell with dinner. You're not. We're not going to McDonald's because now we have to get the handyman, and you're not going to get the football because now I got to spend the money putting the new glass in. And this is exactly what happens in the markets. Everything could have been booming, and that report could have been great and sent an asset skyrocketing or had a positive effect. And seconds later, another incident could wipe out that market feeling.
So you have to take all these into consideration when you're trying to set up your trade using the economics calendar. And it's judging human reaction. But building a matrix of market neutral, market negative, and market positive can help you do that. And there's many different ways to trade the results. Now, this is it for tonight, but in our next class on the economics counter, we'll go in and learn how to evaluate these, what type of trading strategies you can use, how the markets will react, what we have as knee-jerk reactions, and how we might be able to use these events for profitable trading. So I'm gonna say good night to you all. Thank you very much. And tomorrow, I don't know what I'm teaching you tomorrow night. We have a new class tomorrow night. And then on our next class on the economics calendar, uh, tomorrow we're learning how to read charts, I believe. On the next class on the economics calendar, we're gonna go one step further and teach you how to start putting this into your trading strategies. So have a good night. Thank you for supporting ETX. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.